And that's kind of why we chose the, the name. I mean, it's like they have a new life, basically. Yep. So, all right, guys, episode 98, we are here. I uh, have one of my good friends, Nick Smith. Um, you guys have probably heard of Nick, uh, if you know me. Um, so, been been uh, been trying to get Nick on for 97 episodes. Yeah. So been, the 98th is uh, is Nick's. Yeah. Been busy. Been busy. Right. He's a busy guy. You got to get ahead of him three to five, yeah. six years. I, sometimes I, I was going to say I'm booked up for a while. Yeah. So. so if you guys want to get him on your episode, it's probably a hundred yeah. episodes down the road yeah. for you. So. so. Um, anyways, so yeah, super excited, Nick. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Thanks um, for having me. This will be fun. But before we officially get started, um, we're going to read a review. So as you guys all know, all of the reviews that we get at Warren Amounts Agency are a very big deal. Um, bad word or good word, tra or, I'm sorry, bad word travels faster than good. So anytime we can have the opportunity to get some good things said about us, um, that's a, that, that goes a long ways. So we appreciate all the reviews that we have all had from all of our clients. Um, so Brooke M, she says, I wish I didn't have to call them after the initial setup, but I do. Every time I call for help, report an accident, everything is handled quickly and seamlessly. Yes, thank you, Brooke. Um, that's, that's, that's kind of quiet. Turn this way, turn that one up a little bit. There we go. Uh, there it is. So yeah, thank you, Brooke. Um, we actually were just talking about this recently about how <clears throat> you know uh, the the servicing side of things in our agency is is a huge it's a huge thing for us um, because again you have insurance in case you ever have to use it you want to be efficient with it you want to be able to talk to somebody so um, Brooke we appreciate that um, we we take a lot of pride in handling claims efficiently and quickly and fast so anyways all right peek in a pit. Peak in a pit. Have you thought about it? I've thought about it a little bit. Okay. Um, I'd say peak. Let's um, start with the peak. What, did you, what you got? Just at home, man. Family is flourishing. Got a great wife, great kid. Got mm -hmm. a kid on the way, so it's always great to get That's home. That's cool. When, is, when so, does the second one do? August 21st. Wow. August 21st. That's like I know. two months away. <laughs> I know. We got a lot of Damn. stuff to do, but hey, we'll get there. Is Lee excited? Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Okay. Yeah. It'll be a change going from. And how old will two. Beckham be at that time? Uh, he will be almost, almost two. two. Yeah, he'll be almost two. He'll be like 22 months. Okay, so. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good peak. Um, a peak for me is we just, um, we are in the process of hiring some people at the agency. Mm -hmm. um, so should have a couple people on, new faces, and uh, very excited about the changes with that. Um, that'll be, it's, it's always good to, it's actually, we talked about this the other night, um, you know, I think the personalities we're going to have in here are going to be really cool. Yeah. They say hire the personality and train the, train the skill. For sure. Um, so very excited about a couple new people coming on. Um, so that's a peak for me. And then a pit for me, I'll just go ahead and start on that, is we are just got a lot of stuff going on in the next like two months. We're going to be very busy with stuff with work. Um, we're going to be busy with stuff outside of work. Um, I think, I mean, I think we're going to be basically pretty much packed every single weekend until the end of july yeah so yeah we're the same way we're busy yeah season, so. it's it sucks it's fun like there's there's some peaks with that but um just knowing that every weekend yeah. is going to be tied up it's exhausting it's exhausting it's exhausting so, absolutely but i'd much rather i guess still be exhausted with stuff to do than just bored out of my mind yeah. not doing anything i agree so all right what do you got uh pit um i mean i'll relate that to work too i mean it's just uh, I mean, I work in an ER, which we'll get into, um, but it's just, it's busy every yep. single day, man. It's just, it's so exhausting going into work, just knowing that, you know, <laughs> you don't even get time to sit down and eat. You just got to Yeah, because you guys work long shifts. We do, yeah. It's typically 12-hour shifts. Um, yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's when you get there, it's pretty much just go, 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 and, you know, for 12 full hours. Yep. And, yeah, that, that, I feel like you kind of probably black out at some yeah, point. No, exactly. Like, yeah, it's. Next don't thing really you know, get to, it's like yeah. you blink and it's yeah. you've been there for 12 hours and you're driving home and exactly. just exhausted waking up and doing it all over again yep but hey it is what it is well let's let's uh just go into it with that comment um so tell i guess tell everybody a little bit about yourself yeah um so you got you know, i know you're from 
you know, me and you have known each other for shit all of our life. Yeah, exactly. I um, mean, we were in little baby pageants together. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we, me and Jake known each other for since we were born, pretty much. Yep. Um, but yeah, my name's Nick Smith. I grew up in Pleasant Hill, um, born, born and raised here. Um, after high school, eventually went off and got uh, went to college. Well, I took a year off of college. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, got in a little bit of trouble. Didn't know what I really wanted to do. Had um, some bad friends. But uh, hey, it's, it is what it is. Um, eventually went off to college. Um, I guess that would be 2011. We graduated mm-hmm. 2010, about 2011, I guess I went off to college. Went into college, went to UCM down in Warrensburg, didn't mm-hmm. know what I really wanted to do, mm-hmm. um, which I feel like is a huge issue, especially with the younger population. You know, you're mm-hmm. always forced, like, that's, like, crammed down mm-hmm. everybody's throat. Go to college, go to college, go to college, mm-hmm. which, obviously, looking at you, I mean, look how successful yeah, no, it's you wild. are, you yeah. know. It's, uh, you gotta, ha- it's like, you, as a young age, you have to figure out, or you're supposed to figure out exactly what you want to do, yeah. and it's like, you don't even know who you are yet, Exactly. So it's like, um, how are you supposed to make that decision? Yeah, which is a whole nother issue, you know, I think, uh, growing up, you know, going through high school and whatnot, sitting through those long classes that you don't need, and uh, I think they can do a little bit of reforming, and, you know, help, wild, help people, yeah. uh, figure out what they want to do rather than, yeah, you know, exactly. Um, But hey, it is what it is. So, yep, I went off to college. um, Didn't know what I wanted to do when Mm -hmm. I got to college, so I kind of just got pushed into a major. Um, I started out in athletic training, Mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, those guys that run onto the field when somebody gets hurt in football Mm -hmm. or whatnot. Um, Was in that for a few semesters. Uh, Shortly after that, switched over to exercise science. Was Mm -hmm. in that for a few semesters. Um, and then a new degree, sport management, came along at UCM, and I was actually one of the first uh, students of that degree. So kind of got pushed into that, too. Graduated with that. Didn't know what I really wanted to do. I wanted to work with, you know, the Chiefs would yeah. be the, the end goal or, mm-hmm. you know, some uh, major league sport. Um, but uh, found out, you know, you really have to know somebody so to how get does into that, that. Is that like... When it, like, are you like with, was that like a training job, like an athletic trainer? So yeah, um, the, when I was doing athletic training, yeah. So they actually had you work with certain sports during okay. during your training. Okay. So um, you were getting the experience working with the football teams, you know, learning how to do certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I got far enough into it where I actually got to you know hang out with the football team mm-hmm. before their games and whatnot, wrap up their ankles. Okay. You know. Okay. So um, it was still okay. Okay. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, it was just something that I didn't want yeah. to do. But that's, that's also going back to the fact that, you know, you get pushed into college, you mm-hmm. know, what do you want to do? It's like, oh, that sounds cool. Let's try that. Yeah. And then, you know, it, it, I mean, I don't know what the statistic is, but, uh, you know, it, it's more more people than not, you know, they switch majors, you know, once or multiple times, yep. um, you know, when they go into their undergrad. So. Yep. So you did that, sports medicine, yep. got out of school, did that for, how long did you do it after, when you got out of college the first oh, time? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I got out with my sport management, um, I started my internship uh, with Anytime Fitness and Lee Summit, then eventually switched over. I actually uh, Mm -hmm. did it with Aaron here, Mm -hmm. Aaron Simpson, um, Anytime Fitness, did my internship there. And I mean, honestly, I think I was actually in my internship whenever I started to look into nursing school. (laughs) So I I I got out and I was just like, well, I mean, I got to finish this. You know, I don't really like to quit things. So I just just kept at it. And, you know, now I have a degree that I'll never get do yeah. anything with well which but is fine but that's gonna say i mean it, it got you i don't know I, I i don't i look at it as anything we've done in the past like and it sounds it's so cliche like no regrets with everything because yeah everything got us to where you are sure to where we're at yeah. now okay. and it everything happens for that reasons right so um I, I agree with that and the experience you've got from it like sure it's not wasted time yeah i actually listened to joe rogan the other day and he was talking about how you know I don't know, he was bringing up some commerce, so maybe like an old relationship, and she mm-hmm. was like, oh, you know, I wasted all this time with you, and he's like, that's such a horrible way of looking yeah. at it. Like, yeah. no, you don't waste any time. Yeah. Like, we're not investing. Sure, in yeah. I mean, so, yeah, with relationships, I mean, you find out, you know, what you don't want and what you yeah. want, so. But same thing in life. I mean, you go, yeah. through, you go through a degree, and you're like, okay, this is not it, and kudos to you for making a change and re- recognizing that change before you just do your job for 15 20 years and just yeah. hate what you do and yeah 
So a lot Definitely. of people will do that. So, yeah. so after that, you got you went into um, schooling for um, exercise science. Yeah, or, uh, Ex- sports, uh, management. sports management. Figured yeah, out you didn't like it. Yep. And then what and did then that look like with going back into nursing school? Going back into nursing school. So I guess yeah, I guess there was an upside to, to doing you know extra or athletic training, exercise science, sport management because um, I had a lot of the prerequisites that you needed to get into nursing school. Mm-hmm. Um, which I spent, I don't know, maybe a year trying to just get some prerequisites to get into nursing school, okay. um, which I did some at Longview College, just some community colleges. Um, and then uh, the nursing school that I went to, uh, which was Research College of Nursing, okay. um, they required me to do a couple courses at Rockhurst. Um, that was just one of the requirements. Mm-hmm. So I did a couple prerequisites there. Um, and then I went into Research College of Nursing, um, which was an accelerated program. So <laughs> it was a it was a very fast program. So it was a one year, and you get your bachelor's of nursing, okay. um, which typically will take. Um, I mean, you can people do it in four years. I mean, they go into undergrad and they get their nursing degree. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it was an accelerated program. It was twelve months. It was it was brutal. It was Monday through Friday, eight to five, pretty much every single day. Um, and then we had clinicals on top of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so graduated with that um, in two thousand and seventeen, and then I actually started at Research Medical Center in the ER as a new grad um, in two thousand and seventeen. So as a nurse. As a nurse. Okay. Um, which that was in seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. Okay. Yeah, it's been. And I what year is it? Twenty four now. I know. So. It's crazy to think how, wow. how much time has gone by. Yeah, that's like seven years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming up on eight. Yeah. Um, okay. So I've been in medicine since, I mean, 2017. Um, and then how long were you a nurse? Before, yeah. Yeah, before getting your, um, your what, FMP license? Your yeah, nurse for, practitioner? family nurse practitioner license. Um, so I was in school probably, probably a year before... I was working for probably a year before I started. Uh, I, I made the transition and went into nurse practitioner school, okay. um, which I went into nurse practitioner school at UCM in Warrensburg. It was all online. Um, it was it was through COVID, which was <laughs> another crazy thing. Um, mm-hmm. It was crazy, you know. We, I started in 2017. COVID wasn't around. Um, and then just seeing how it was then, and then shortly after COVID came about, and it's just like it's just yeah. it turned the Completely medical different. field on its on its head. It was yep. it was it was the most crazy thing to watch. Um, so you were in were you in school during like to go to to get your nurse practitioner uh-huh. license during COVID? Uh-huh. Yeah. And then you were still working though as I a was nurse. Still working, yeah. I was working full time as a nurse uh, in the ER, doing night shift, seven to seven. Um, you had some crazy stories. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you yeah. saw some crazy things. Oh, my uh, gosh. Uh, at, at, at the ER. Yeah, things that you, you'd never see. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so. that also sets you up. I feel like that's very, probably in the ER, it's very fast paced. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, and I don't think that's, is that how all nursing jobs are? No, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I didn't think so. So yeah. I think it's cool that you've gotten to see the fast paced stuff, and this is gonna, we're gonna go into some other things here, but. It was just, it was a crazy time in life, you know? I was, like I said, working full time, going to school pretty much full time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, you know, when I got into clinicals for nurse practitioner school, I was doing clinicals, working full time, mm-hmm. going to school full time. During COVID. During COVID. Like, that's just, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a lot. I learned a lot. And, I got out and I learned even more. So, so when did you get your license? When did you get your nurse practitioner license? Um, so that would have been, so I've been working as a nurse practitioner for about two and a half years now. Okay. So you would have got it back in basically 2020 almost, yeah. or 2020, no, 2021. Yeah. Right around there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was uh, the program that I went to. I mean, you could take more classes, less classes, and kind of go at your own pace. But I got it done in a right around three years, which okay. is like an average amount of time. Yeah. And you worked during that time. And I worked the whole during time. that time. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. So. so yeah, 2021 is when you restart practicing, you know, with a nurse practitioner license. And then now what are you doing now? Are you still working in the ER or? Yeah. So I still work in the ER. So I don't work, f- I work for Research Medical Center, but I don't work at the main hospital. Okay. Um, they have a freestanding hospital called Brookside ER. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still affiliated with research. Um, it's just a freestanding ER. Um, I mean, it's like five miles away from research. Okay. Um, it's only walk-ins. We don't take ambulances in. Gotcha. Which that's a whole other thing. We're, we're actually uh, breaking ground, hopefully, at the beginning of the year and building a new ER. Okay. 
Um, and there's talks of maybe accepting ambulances, but I mean, they, they yeah. don't know for sure. They're still trying to figure does out. Does that make that. things, is that, what, what does that change? Is for the ambulances? Just, yeah, um, so when more. you get ambulances, you're going to see a lot sicker patients. Gotcha. Um, usually, not all the time, because <laughs> um, we have people that take ambulances mm-hmm. and abuse it, but hey, it is what it is. Um, but when you get the ambulance traffic in, you usually start seeing, seeing more, stuff. more sick people. Yeah. Um, and and I, I just don't know how it's going to work out because we are already so busy mm-hmm. um, just from walk-in people. I mean, our gotcha. average for a 24-hour period, I mean, we see 100, 120 patients a day really? on average. Oh it, and, you know, you sit there and think, like, how many, like, how can you see this many people consistent day in and day out? But yeah. we do. <laughs> Yeah, that's so, wild. That's a lot. Yeah. So what made you, so you were a nurse, got in, and then, you know, you decided you want to go get your nurse practitioner mm-hmm. license. Um, what made you want to get that? Like, what was, was, was it just, just learning something new? Yeah, or what I, was I, it? I mean, I kind of always went into nursing knowing that I kind of wanted to get to, to do the that highest, anyways? Okay. To, to get to the highest thing possible, you know, with the nursing, which would be, you know, family nurse practitioner, mm-hmm. or, you know, nurse practitioner. Um, you know, you can do family mm-hmm. nurse practitioner, you can do pediatric nurse practitioner, you know, geriatric, older people, um, acute care where you're taking care of really sick patients. Mm-hmm. Um, family nurse practitioner is nice, though, because you can really do anything. Pretty everything. broad. It's very broad. Um, you know, if I went into pediatric nurse practitioner, you know, I can only see a certain age. It's like an you itch. Know. Exactly. Like, you can see kids up to, you know, mm-hmm. that makes sense. 17, yeah. whatever. Um, but you don't specialize in, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. With family nurse practitioner, it's from birth to death. Okay. So. Makes sense. Okay. So, yeah. So, that was just something you always wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and then... Like what I guess, and that's actually a great, great example. Or as I was going to ask, like what the difference, like what's the difference between a family nurse practitioner and a pediatric nurse yeah. practitioner? Yeah, and that just, makes total sense. It's like, just scope. That's yeah. all it is. I mean, is that good or bad? Like it, it like is there like what do normal like is does a lot of people go into the family nurse practitioner role or? I see a lot more people going into family nurse yeah. practitioner. I mean, I know people that have been into like psychiatric nurse practitioners mm-hmm. are a big thing right now. Right. Um, they they pay very well for family nurse practitioner right. or for psychiatric nurse practitioner. And I mean, you know, mental illness is on yeah. the rise. Um, so it, it's it's a good field to go into, but you're kind of you're you kind of pigeonhole yourself into mm-hmm. that. I mean, that that's what you specialize in, which can be good, can be bad. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you don't get all this other experience, but you get you know, a hundred percent experience yeah. with mental health and, you know, yeah. all these psychiatric. Yeah. Illnesses. I compare that to like the agency, like where, you know, we have offer all different types of insurance mm-hmm. and it's like, okay, we only offered commercial auto insurance, sure. right? Which there are some agencies out there. So I guess it's just kind of personal preference. So, okay. Um, well, let's talk about, so you've been, you've been in the health field since 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, how is that in general? Like, I feel like we talked about this the other day. Like, I feel like it's very, that can be very exhausting. Like, it is. Your, your hours are, and I hear this from so many people, like you guys are just always so busy, um, you know, and you guys work these long shifts and have, you know, two, three, four days off and then go back and work these long shifts again. Um, and we did the math on it and it's not like you're, I mean, with the, the math that mm-hmm. we did the other day, it's not like you're working a ton of hours, like on a weekly sure. basis, like yeah. an average. But it's like, man, when someone's working three to four, you know, days in a row of twelve-hour shifts, like that is just a hundred percent exhausting. Yeah, no, it is mentally exhausting. I think the most I've ever did was uh, when I was a nurse. Um, I did six twelve-hour shifts in a row, which I know there's, there's people out there that do more. Yeah. But dude, like it's like that fifth and sixth day, I mean, you're just like a zombie. Like, yeah. Uh, you know. Um, Why do they do the long shifts versus having like eight, you know, like eight hour shifts, eight to 10 hour shifts? Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know why it's been like that, but that's just, that's just Mm -hmm. how it's always been. That's all what I've always known. I know that's kind of the only thing Uh, I've ever, ever, ever heard of. Yeah. And I feel like. But some places do it different. Um, I I believe like North Kansas City does it different. I think they do, or Olathe maybe. Um, There are some places out there that will do eight hour shifts, Mm -hmm. um, which we, we got so busy that we actually added in what we call princess shifts, um, Monday through Friday which is an eight hour shift okay. um it's you know it's it's you don't have to do it if you don't want to it's optional if you want to pick it up and it's there you can um and the biggest thing with that is i mean it just made me realize like how mm-hmm. from from eight hours to 12 hours the difference yeah it's like an eight hour shift you can go in you can be i mean sharp 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 you can knock out i mean tons of patients but i mean 
the 12 hour shifts, I mean, you can start like that, but you're not gonna finish like that. And that's kind of my thought, that's why I asked that, is because I feel like the efficiency and how sharp somebody is on hour one versus hour 10 sure. or 11, mm-hmm. it's, you're not gonna get the same performance. I, I, and, I agree with that, 100%. And I, I, I'm you're gonna all have people that say, that say otherwise, but that, it's, that's not No, like I just is. don't see, <laughs> like, you know, especially with making quick decisions, sure. um, you know, you're, you're talking about people's health, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, and their yeah. livelihood. Yeah, trying like not I've, to miss anything. You know, like, yeah. I, I feel like, I don't know, like, I know even in insurance, like, you know, we can't make mistakes, right? Yeah. Well, in the nursing or in the, the medical field, like, you can't make mistakes sure. either, be right? Pretty, pretty costly, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so I feel like you would want people to be as efficient and as sharp as possible. Yeah. And p- making just 12-hour shifts the only, basically, shift that I ever really hear about, like, that just seems, I don't know, it just I, seems a little off. But, I totally agree. Because, like, I feel like when I work, you know, if I work, because I get here at, like, 8 at least um, and work till, you know, 6 at, at minimum, right? Yeah. And that's what, what is that, 10 hours? Mm-hmm. And that's, I mean, that doesn't seem bad, but if I'm up here till 8 o'clock or something or yeah. get here, like, that's, like, a long day, sure. right? And there's days that are like, that are like that. Yeah. But it's it's if that was an everyday thing, mm-hmm. like I just I don't know I would get I feel like I'd get burnt out yeah. quicker versus you know working eight you know eight to ten hours a day right maybe working six days a week like I can do that sure. like I don't yeah. feel like I'm just drained yeah and that's the flip side I mean it's like you work more hours per day less Correct. days per week or Correct. you work more days per week yeah. less hours <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean that's I mean it like is what it is yeah like I said that's all I've known that's all I've done so I've just kind of. So what is next then? What is next? Um, well, I don't know. I, I I don't ever like to be stagnant. I, I know always, you don't. I always like. You're that. also in the process of getting your pilot I license. I am. Yes. So Nick is. So if ever, anybody who knows Nick, Nick always has to be studying for something. Yeah. Like that's his thing. Like, you know, he goes to school, gets a degree, and like, ah, oh, I want to go back and do this. And like, it's great. Like, it's, sure. I, I think it's awesome that yeah. you know no. you always adapting and changing to yeah. what you want. Yeah. But yeah, you came on. Um, how long have you been doing the whole pilot? Uh, about a year now. Um, yeah. Which I mean, you know, I'm getting my private pilot license. You, there's programs out there where if you do it full time, you can get it in a month, mm-hmm. which is it's great. Yeah. But I don't got the time for that. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm a dad. I'm yep. a father. Yep. A yep. Husband. Job. A job. Yeah. Um, You're an adult. Adult. Exactly. So I, it's just. And the weather in Midwest. I mean, you gotta obviously fly when there's good weather out there. That's so. true. Trying to, uh, you know, and then with your instructor schedule, it's, it's just taken a little bit longer than I thought, but it's been about a year yep. now. So I'm, I'm to the point where I, I just need to sharpen up a little bit of my skills. I got all my required hours that I need. I just, and now I just need to find a, a DP is what they call it to okay. uh, check me off. So, yeah. So I guess that when I ask that, like, what's next? Because, again, you're always looking to, yeah, no, to, yeah. to better yourself and, yeah. you know, uh, getting a pilot license. Like, that's yeah. going to be awesome. It's yeah. going to be a lot of fun with that. Yeah. So but it's just like just talk. with your mind. I mean, it's just like with your body. I mean, you, can't, you can't be sedentary. I mean, Correct. sedentary lifestyle, you're, you're, you're going to well, die early. I get at it, you know, and we, me and Michaela got talking about this. Like, if you think about it, like, when you're young, you're always learning something new. Absolutely. And, and, mm-hmm. and you don't even... You just you just go and you just like that's just second nature for, for you. Sure. Like you're just learning. That's yeah. all you're doing every single day. Yeah. So if you go out and do something new, mm-hmm. like yeah. that's you know you're not scared of it, yeah. right? Because you're that you're used to learning that. Yeah. Versus as an adult, we get into our jobs, we get doing the day to day the same thing every single day, mm-hmm. and then you get scared of learning something sure. new. You that get, way, when something new has come up, yeah, yeah, when something new comes up, you're like, oh, I don't know, like I don't really want to put all that time in to learn that yeah. because it's like it's scary. Versus if you're always learning something new, that fear never kicks in. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So I feel like you've done a great job because like I've always, I even said when you back, went back to school, I'm like, God, man, I would hate to do that i yeah. mean i would hate to go back to school now sure i mean i would just i mean i would absolutely hate it yeah um so yeah i mean like keeping your mind fresh and keeping challenging your mind to do new things i think that's a big deal um and i feel like you've done a great job with mm-hmm. that so let's lead into the into the next thing with you know your medical medical experience yeah um what's next with that um, well, I'm in the process of starting my own business. That's what I heard. So, okay. Um, it, it's very early on. I mean, I'm still, you know, getting malpractice insurance. Uh, still trying to get my Kansas nurse mm-hmm. practitioner license. Um, 
the biggest reason why I'm going into Kansas for it is because as a nurse practitioner, um, in some states, you have to have a doctor oversee everything you do. Okay. Um, it's just called restrictive restrictive state. Uh, there's other states out there called full practice authority, which you don't have to have a doctor oversee really anything you do. Okay. Um, Kansas being one of those. Um, there's talks about, you know, when Missouri is going to become full practice, which they're, they're in the process of trying to get it to go through. Um, so that's kind of why I selected Kansas as, uh, you know, the, the location of the, the new business, um, just because I don't have to have anybody oversee mm-hmm. what I do, um, which, you know, there's upsides and downsides to that. There's all, you know, if you needed questions For about sure. something, there's always something to run to. But um, I think I have a, a, a good group of people that I could talk to if I ever had a questions yeah. about anything that, uh, you know, would be more than happy to answer any questions that I had. Yeah. So what, what does that... So what, what, I guess, what, what is the business? So the business. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on men and women's health, um, you know, hormone replacements. Uh, weight loss is the big thing, too. Okay. Um, you know, I just feel like everybody's right now is doing weight loss, which, you know, it, if, you, if you look at the American population, uh, we need it. We do. Um, so, you know, helping people reach their, you know, fitness goals, their weight goals. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you know, helping people with hormone, you know, replacements. Yeah. Um, trying to help, you know, balance out hormones. Um so, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I feel like tele, I mean, is it like a telemedicine so, company or is it like in person? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, so doing testosterone. So, if you do testosterone for males, so mm-hmm. testosterone is technically a controlled substance. Okay. So, you have to have your DEA license. It goes through all, you know, it, it's all regulated. Okay. Um, and one of the stipulations into that is you have to see patients for their initial visit in person. Okay. Um, so that's why I had to rent out an office in Kansas, um, just because, you know, you have to document that you saw that person in person. Okay. Um, and then the subsequent visits, they can be telemedicine, gotcha. which is okay. perfect. Yeah. Um, just because you, you convenience can, for the so client convenient. or for your patient. Mm-hmm. It's so convenient. I mean, telemedicine has, especially with COVID, mm-hmm. telemedicine blew up. Um, I mean, you, you, was that a thing before COVID? It was, yeah, but it mm-hmm. wasn't, okay. in my opinion, it wasn't as widespread as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, you know, you had some doctors, you know, if you had a cough, they're not going to see you in person. Yeah. They, they, they want to see you over the phone or over the, you know, video chat. Hmm. It, it, it was, it's a wild, wild yeah. time. Um, but, no, I think telemedicine's great. I mean, I think, obviously, there's some things where you can't do telemedicine. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't, you know, if someone's chest pain, you can't do telemedicine Correct. for a chest pain. I mean, yeah. you can't listen to them. You can't see them, you know, like, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. But for, you know, the hormone replacements, men's health, women's health. Yeah, because that's just like looking at, I mean, I'm, I mean, I know there's more probably go, that goes into it, of course, but like looking at labs, labs. right? Like mm-hmm. looking, like you can get a lot of the information that you need by the labs, Absolutely. right? And then, yeah. then you can make recommendations sure. and adjustments with, with you know, with, with, with the results from yeah. the labs. Absolutely. Um, and I feel like that's a that's an also like a pandemic as well is is is, is men's testosterone like yeah. it's really dropped a it lot is. like if you it look has. at the average testosterone in a male thirty you know in today's time versus yeah. what it was twenty years ago sure. like th- that number is a lot different and it all has to do with your weight I it mean does. it all has to do with obesity I yeah. mean you start getting these obese people I mean your your testosterone is going to go down mm-hmm. I mean and and we're in a society where we're everything you eat pretty is, obese yeah. so it's very I mean, easy to get you know food and fast food Absolutely. like DoorDash like yeah. all these different things yeah. like, and you can just stay at your house all the time and never have to leave you and yeah you don't you eat literally don't have to leave foods and yeah um, so yeah of course you know the the reference range for testosterone it's going to be lower than it was 20 30 years mm-hmm. ago because that's what the average is now yeah. i mean the that's average wild. is lower yeah and people aren't as active as you know as they used to sure. be either right yeah. um, so no that's cool i feel like um, I feel like I've seen some of these, you know, companies come up and stuff, and they they seem to be doing really good. And I feel like, you know, the the deficiencies that we that we have as you know humans, like I think you know you're really feeling a really big need there. Yeah. Um, because again, the deficiencies is probably also feeding into the reason why hormones are off balance, sure. mental health is off, Absolutely. Um, because of hormone ba- hormones are off mm-hmm. balance. Like if your hormones are on, are on, on check or in check, like. Yeah. I feel like that sure. that, that all kind of goes in with each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. I mean, you know, growing up, you know, I I've, I've done testosterone injections mm-hmm. in the past and you know, when those levels get to where they need to be, you know it. Yeah. You can feel it. Yeah. When you wake up, yeah, throughout the day, you don't have fatigue, you don't have yeah. this mental fog. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's uh 
Yeah, and people think it's normal, I think. And I think we actually had somebody come on a couple months ago. Um, me and him talked on like men's mental health. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest things was mm -hmm. making sure hormones are in check. Sure. And I feel like that's a big deal because like a lot of times people think, well, this is just me. Like this is just getting older. Mm -hmm. like, we're just getting older and this is how I'm supposed to feel. Yeah. That's not. No, I mean, not like, at all. you know, there, there's if you look at if you look at like as people who really take care of their bodies and sure. take care of themselves, you know, they can be 60, 70 years old. Looking skin, better than someone skin, in their 20s. Like they look better and better yeah. as they get older. Absolutely. And I think that's a. I mean, you know, that that that's a basically a result of what you put into your body and how 100%. you take care of your yeah. body. You I know? mean, you you literally are what you eat. I mean. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, you eat yeah. stuff, that's the building blocks to what your body is. And yep. I mean, if you eat like crap, you're probably gonna feel like crap. Yeah, So and it's, it's wild. Like if you if you can get your, like you said, your hormones and, and if you think about it, like think about it, you'll go eat, you know, super clean, super healthy, drink a lot of water for two or three weeks. Yeah. You wake up so clear, not bloated, and then you combine that with making sure your, you know, your, your hormones and your testosterone and everything is in check where yeah. it needs to be. It doesn't need to be, in the, it needs to be above what it usually mm -hmm. is now and you have to have that balance and sure. if something is off yeah if you can somehow pinpoint what what is off i mean that can just slingshot somebody ahead very quickly oh, in absolutely. life with their I, business their relationships everything yeah mentality absolutely I, I think yeah for sure i mean it, it's all a synergistic thing i mean your your hormones you know what mm -hmm. you eat what you drink being active exercising yeah. and that's what you're going to be focusing on yeah the most, absolutely i mean mm -hmm. majority of the time yeah definitely okay. Definitely. Okay. So that's awesome. Yeah. So it's just gonna be something I start out part time and, and see you know where it goes and you know if it takes off it takes off. Yeah. If not I'll work on. Do it. Do we have a name yet for it? Are we allowed do, to? Yeah. Are we allowed to have the name yeah, out yet? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, New life, health, and wellness. Okay. So that's awesome. Yeah. That'll be really cool. Um, do you know? Um, like I know you said Missouri is is potentially gonna be opening that mm -hmm. up. How, what does that look like? Like, let's say you start your business in Kansas and then it opens up in Missouri. Yeah. Can you switch it over and we're so, just in Missouri now? Or so even though you have I your actually, Kansas license too? Yeah, I reached out to somebody about that because it's just, there's just so much gray area when it comes mm -hmm. to this stuff. You know, it's like, you know, being in Kansas where, you know, I can do anything and everything that I want to as a nurse practitioner, being so close to Missouri where I live, where all my friends are, mm -hmm. where all my, you know, Network family is. is. Yep. Exactly. It's like, I can't do anything over here. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, I reached out to somebody about it just so they could shed some more light on it. Um, and they told me, you know, as long as the, where, when you're seeing that patient, if it's taking place in the state where there is full practice, you're good to go. Okay. So I can technically see patients from Missouri in Kansas, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So. Yeah. It's kind of like when we write life insurance, right? Like if I write life insurance in somebody in you know another state. Yeah. Um, I either need to be licensed in that state, mm -hmm. um, and if I'm not, then they need to come, they technically need to come here to yeah. our office, sure. right? Yeah. And where we write a policy in, yeah. you know, Missouri. So wherever right? that or business licensed. is taking place. Correct. Yep, that's exactly how it is yep. there. So. Yep, that's kind of what I was thinking. So, but would there be a need? So I guess if, if let's say Missouri does open up where you can mm -hmm. have a full practice, is that something that you would think that, you know, you would move your office over move. where you could still practice I mean, you could still do yeah. the same thing. Like, you could still, pr like, you see people from Kansas and Missouri. Sure. Right? I could, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, hopefully I'll get, you so know. That's just a convenient, like, that's just a, what it, can you have both your license, Missouri, Missouri and, Kansas, and Kansas, so it yeah. doesn't really matter where you'll be. Exactly. That'll be, that'll yeah. be an option for yep. you. Yeah, okay. exactly. I mean, I would obviously like to come back to the, for sure. to the Missouri side. I mean, yeah. you know, this is just a very small space that I lease yeah. just, you know, for some months. And okay. Like I said, just see how it takes off. I'm still going to be working full time at the ER. Okay. I'm still doing all my shifts that I got to do there. So when do you think? I know this is like again. I know this is kind of the startup process of everything, and I think what we should do is once you get up and rolling, and have you back on. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, but what like when when is the timetable or when's the timeline? Here? Uh, so I am. Um, I bought some courses, you know, to do all my education through mm -hmm. um, to get accredited through them. Um, so I just need to sit down and do those, but I mean, I haven't got to look at them really right now just because I'm so busy with trying to get my yeah. pilot license and whatnot. Um, but uh, my lease for the building, it starts on um, July 1st. So okay. after July 1st, I can get in there. Um, just need to get all my trainings done. Okay. And I'm hoping, you know, maybe mid-July. Early August. Off, so early soon. August, okay. you know, um, yeah. when I can start seeing patients. That'll be really cool. Um, I'd be interested to hear, like, what that process looks like. Yeah. I know we can't go into like results and stuff, but I feel like that's be a very rewarding um, thing to do. 
Yeah. Because um, I, I, there's nothing better whenever, I mean, I mean, we all talk about workouts and fitness in here, and there's nothing better like whenever you like talk to somebody and they lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. Like those people are just so excited. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like, it's man. like it's like I mean, and that's kind of why changing. we chose the the name. I mean, it's like they have a new life basically. Yep. You know, and, and you've you've met people that have changed. You know, yeah. like that that have lost a, a shit ton of weight. Yeah. And it's just it's like cool. they're just like a totally different person. I mean, I mean it's the like energy, whole, yeah, like their, their attitude, mindset just changes. Yeah. And like, there's so many benefits that go like. Then you have the, the the confidence, the mental clarity, like mm-hmm. all the things that come with that in yeah. the short term. But then the long term effect of that is even yeah. that's stuff that you don't even. We're not even visually. Exactly. We're not even you, actually it, living. Exactly. Yet. You can't even. It, it's hard to, to picture what it's gonna. Correct. How it's gonna change your life down the road. Because like everybody talks about diets. Yeah. It's not like diets are what they are. Yeah. Right. It's a it's a time where you you do something for a certain amount of time and then the diet's now over. Sure. Versus a lifestyle, lifestyle change, exactly. right? This is a lifestyle, something and that you can sustain, and yeah, you can be flexible with it. I mean, it's not like you got to eat chicken and rice every single day no, of your life. I mean, but there's ways to get creative with, exactly. with with eating healthy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really mess this one up, but I'm gonna try and say it. It says some somebody said somebody something along the lines of, you know, eating healthy is expensive, but when you get like. I'm not even gonna say it. I can't. I'm. I'm about to send it to you. It was really good. Yeah. It, it was like super good. It's basically, he was talking. They were talking about how like you know, oh, eating healthy is, is super super sure. expensive. Yeah. But if you when you get sick, like the the effects of you getting sick is way more expensive. Than, oh, than the health would ever be. Oh, right? for because sure. Because it, it 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 takes away not only money from you, mm-hmm. but it takes away time. time. It takes away um, you know things that you can actually physically do. Right. Yeah. Versus just a, a, a an actual wealth or a, a money, you know, attachment yeah. to it. So, anyways, it's uh, you know, pick your expensive, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, we've been going at it for about forty minutes, forty-five minutes. Anything else you want to add? Not that I could think of. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, next time maybe we can get on and talk about um, when you were a child from ages like one to two, yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah. you can talk about how tall you were at that age. Yeah, and... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, episode 90, <laughs> well, we got episode 98. 98. Kayla, I had to do that, so you can cut that out. But, all right, so episode 98, Nick, thank you for coming on, Yes, man. thank it's you for fun. having me. No, it's um, been great. I'm excited to uh, get you back on. We'll yeah, talk about definitely. the business whenever it's up and running. Yeah, hopefully a couple months, and... we'll, we'll get me back on and we'll yeah, we'll I mean, see obviously, I'll have a little bit more to, to share about the business and, yeah. and knowledge about, you know, men and women's health. So. Yeah, no, I love that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nick. Awesome. Thanks, Jake.